Jane found a new connect, so we all back in business together. Now, whatever beef y'all still got, squash that shit right now. We need to be able to control this Tariq St. Patrick. Well, maybe I can help. Did you know Jabari Reynolds? Did I get a phone call? Power. Book two, season two, episode three trailer. And if you followed my channel and stars last week, they've already released this. So this is just going to be a rehashing with more details because we've seen all the events in episode two. And man, we got some barn burners going on. People wondering, is Mecca, Kane, Drew, or Diana's father? Do we have enough information to substantiate that just yet? We'll break that all down and some of the other clues that they're giving us in this trailer one more time and let's just see where we're going to go. You're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on those notifications so when I drop videos you get them. Also follow the Life Gains Financial channel for those of you trying to get your financial house in order. I put videos on my other channel about stocks, real estate, saving money, Tesla, all things to help you get those life gains. And if you still want to get a chance to win the Power T-shirt, all you got to do is go subscribe to me on IG, DM me what was your favorite moment from this past episode. Let's finish this trailer, and then we'll go through it and pick it apart. I need you. You owe me. You need to talk. Talk? I'm going to need a little quid from you before I can quo. Ain't nobody safe. Especially you. Very beginning, we've got Monet meeting up with Kane and Tariq. Now, what Monet doesn't know is that, first and foremost, her own damn son set her up. He's the mastermind of that plot to get himself back into the family. And I don't even think Tariq knows it. And what she's wanting them to, to do is to squash the beef that they got. She doesn't even know that the whole thing dealing with Jabari is a Tariq issue. Kane was there. Tariq was there. Tariq's supposed to be handling the situation. Monet is in the dark about everything. Monet is in the dark about everything because her heart is hurting, my people. She wants love. She wants out of this drug game. At this point, I think she just wants to be a housewife, and she's looking at Zeke as her ticket to get there. But that is in a whole lot of question after what we've seen in this last episode. We get Mecca talking to Kane just basically questioning Kane about the status of Tariq. Now, this is interesting to me. Why is Mecca so interested in Tariq? And then we get him trying to help Kane keep an eye on Tariq by spying on Tariq, basically, kind of the way ghosts would go and find evidence and spy on his enemies. This is what Mecca is doing. Mecca has really step the ante up in this series because he's a wild card he's dangerous we don't know what what his background is other than we do know now that he knew monet when she was young which is why some people are speculating could he be one of her kids father i don't think we have enough evidence to substantiate that but that is a theory people are pushing around here and just want to know what you guys think but he's spying on Tariq, and I would love to know what is his predilection for Tariq. Because if he's a fed the way some people think he is, maybe he's trying to go up to the top of the organization. If he's really one of these kids' father and he's trying to do the drug game, maybe he is just trying to vet Tariq to see if Tariq really is going to be loyal to the game. Or maybe he had some acquaintance growing up with ghosts and knows that Tariq is ghost son and might have some backlash from that. There's a lot of places they can go with him and we'll just have to see where they go. We get a good look at Detective Bodyguard questioning Zeke and here's all the issues going on with Zeke. Zeke is going to the NBA. We know that. Monet wants to use Zeke. We know that. Monet warns Zeke that these women are going to be throwing themselves at you. And we got a Becky he just slept with. We didn't see no proof of him putting on a condom. Becky could be pregnant. And we know all Becky wants is to be riding that coattail as we seen her recording as they came to get him from his room. 
And you know this is going to mess him up because Becky is going to put that thing online and then he's going to have to figure out how to handle that, which is where I think that that agent who gave him the business card is going to come in and help him out. But you also want to know what is he going to say in this interrogation with Detective Bodyguard because Megram already done said she was with him from 7 o'clock through whatever time she said. And if that is confirmed, then Megram professor addiction is no longer a suspect but here's the problem she's sleeping with one of her students which is a conflict of interest she could lose that job at that institute unless she bows to the bidding of my man tate who is in good graces with stearns who's basically the head of the board for this school i could see them going down that road or will Zeke get in here lie? I mean, get in here and tell everything he knows about his own family, Tariq, and everything. This could just go a bunch of ways. And I do believe that the weakest link in this chain is definitely Zeke. We see Diana talking to Tariq, and Diana basically lied to Tariq about her mom being upset about the drugs being sugar when she really wasn't because she's ready to get out the game, but she's wanting to get them favors back from Tariq because she came and took Tariq all the way up to Yale. And now her and Effie are building a budding dynamic duo, and I hope they go somewhere with that story because I would love to see that. And I would love to see the look of despair on Tariq's face when he realizes these two women is working together. We get Tate talking to Tariq, and basically... Tariq already done came to Tate in this last episode and, you know, holding him to what he said. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. And we no doubt know he's going to get dirt on Sweeney, Rick Sweeney. Tariq is going to get the dirt, and the dirt has got to be something that is in the old pictures. you seen Becca handing Tariq the photo book, and at the end of the day, Courtney Kemp already done said what I speculated. Becca's going to have feelings for Reek, and she's going to help take Sweeney down, which is going to escalate my man Tate to his new show, Influence, and he's going to step into the role Sweeney had, and I can't wait. But what I'm still worried about being collateral damage is his brother's sitting there watching them at whatever event they're at, and you notice the brother's got on his slick coat, nice, everything looking good. I'm worried that this brother is going to somehow be collateral damage because he's helping Tate get dirt on Sweeney and he's looking at him talking to Tariq and the brother knows the whole ins and outs of Tariq because remember the brother was there on the final season of Power knowing what was going on and he's like, bruh, you messing around with him. This can't go well. We get Kane talking to Tariq basically telling Tariq nobody is safe. Now, this is probably going to be the episode where Kane is going to deck Tariq, trying to just say, hey, look, bro, remember, I'm still the muscle around here. But, you know, Tariq is cerebral. Tariq uses his mind to fight his battles. And I'm sure he's going to figure out a way to put Kane back in his place. And then we see Mecca got a look on his face like he's torturing somebody again. I'm just, this character here, man, this character really adds to what's going on this season because we don't really know what's going on with him. What's his deal? Other than we do know he wants some of Monet. We know he had a relationship with Monet back in the day, which a lot of people are translating to one of those kids is his. We see Lorenzo Tejada getting ready to go talk to somebody. Maybe we put money on this that this is one of his kids. Maybe Diana or Drew going to talk to him about the mama spiraling out of control based on the things we've seen in this last episode. And then we see Detective Bodyguard probably talking to his mans about that phone being tracked to Stansfield now is missing. We got Zeke still in the interrogation room, and that look on his face tells me that this boy is really, really close to spilling the beans. And then we get Professor Addiction having a conversation with someone. Maybe this is Method Man again because Method Man is trying to help her. But things that she's going to need to find, that computer Jabari had, that's a treasure trove of information. She finds that computer, she might can officially liberate herself, and maybe Method Man can, through his crooked dealings with Cooper Sacks, 
help make that happen because Method Man sees what's going on with Tariq and Professor Addiction being framed as the number one suspect. And in the next clip, you see him talking to Cooper Sacks, and apparently he gave Cooper Sacks some information that got Cooper Sacks looking crooked mouth. Look at Cooper Sacks. He already ain't got no lips, and then that little crook in his mouth is going the wrong way. And you see the look on Method Man's face like, you better do what the hell I'm telling you. And then they end this trailer on Tariq and Kane talking to each other. Kane still letting Reek know, look, bro, you in danger. You better watch your back. But what more danger could he be in? Because these two characters are so closely tied to each other. Tariq's not a snitch, but he knows everything going on with his organization. He also knows about Jabari being shot by Kane, and then he put the finishing bullet in it. But when is he going to really find out about Mecca? Will he find out about Mecca? Because when Tariq finds out about Mecca, I can't wait to see what plan he's going to put in place to circumvent Mecca or to get inf information and intel on Mecca himself. And then one character we still haven't seen that we're waiting to see is 2-Bit. He's going to pop up because, remember, 2-Bit want that money. And he's probably going to pop up sooner or later, which is probably just going to be a catapult for him going into Tommy's story. So we might see 2-Bit closer to the end of this season of Power, which is just going to be a stepping stone for him being in Tommy's story. So ladies and gentlemen, leave me all your comments and where you think they're going. How could the truth, if Zeke comes clean, hurt his case for the NBA or throw Kerry under the bus? I want to hear from you guys. Post me all your comments. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video. Please comment, subscribe. Get yourself that life game. Follow me on the Life Games financial channel. And also go follow me on Instagram. Till that next sexy as hell video, which will be going live tonight to recap episode two with the crew. I'll see you then.